Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we are going to go ahead and, and basically document our API. So as you may know, previously we've built our API. We have authentication app, we have the CRUD for contacts app. So now we want to be able to, to document it. So now if we are come to like here and try to get to this, you see we get to this, but then how do we expose this to the outside world? For example, if we have a new developer on our team, how do we make it easier for them to onboard on our code base? Of course, if they are working on like on the front end, they won't even need to know anything about our code base, but they want the documentation. They say, show me the documentation. So let's create the documentation for them. <laughs> All right, so here we are going to be using something called, how do they even pronounce this? It's called, oh my goodness. So it's called YASIG, D-R-F YASIG. So basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to easily create the documentation. So right here, we are going to start by installing it. So copy that. So in our, basically here, do pip env install that one. Okay, so as installs, let's keep looking at the steps that they are giving us. So we need to add it to our, to basically our settings.py in the installed apps. So let's do just that settings.py, which is here. So let's add it. All right, so once we have it, what else, do, what else are they saying? So they're actually giving us an example of how to approach this. So right here, I recommend you guys like come and check out this documentation and learn more from it. Learn more about the difference between like Swagger UI and then the Redoc documentation. But what this does, it, it actually gives us two ways to, to look at our data. So it, it has this Redoc documentation and also the Swagger UI documentation. So I'm gonna copy this. So we start from it. So in the urls.py, which is here, just before, okay, let me bring this one. Let me run the server again and then bring this one up. All right, so let's first clean this up a bit. So we're importing permissions, we're importing the view. So this is the, this get schema view Basically, is the one that will be responsible to bootstrap our documentation. So it takes in a configuration like you see, and then it returns us what we'll be seeing in the, in the documentation. So here, we import the get schema view function. So what it does is it takes in this configuration for the info. So here we can define the, the title of our documentation. Let's say contact list API. Then the default version, v1 is okay. The description you can say an API, not API, it's API, great. So an API for the, ah, okay. And it's for contacts, let's keep it simple. So terms of service, this can be your company terms, so here you need to define a contact. So now it can be contact at contacts because yes, this is a contact application. Dot local. <laughs> so let us be remote. Dot remote. Then you specify your license. So this can be any depending on your company policies. So it's public. Yes. Permissions allow any. Yes, we want our front end devs to view it anyway, and be able to access stuff. So here, now we need to, to, go to, to like write these, these URLs. So I'm gonna copy this, then I'm gonna delete this. Actually, I'm gonna delete everything. Let me bring that in here. I say delete, not copy and leave. So now, we basically are going to have parts. So let's rename URL to use parts because URLs is old school. So path, now we want one to be, basically the one that we work with mainly is this one with Swagger UI. So I'm actually going to eliminate with the, the first one. So now we remain with Swagger UI. I want it to go to the home so we can keep 
the default route of the application to get the documentation and swagger is okay so they also provide us an option to use redoc so redoc is also like swagger so let's also keep it so we can see how it looks you might actually you might actually find that it's also as nice as swagger but swag, swagger has some swag i believe i believe that's why it's called swag but it's, it's anyway i'm just kidding but it's a cool it's a cool tool anyway so now we have the setup here so if we go back to our application i'm actually going to open now in the browser so if i click there look at that <laughs> look at that we have the documentation set up so right now one of the things <laughs> anyway so we have the documentation set up just by adding this configuration so right now let's go ahead and fix the problems that's around and then we see how to to finalize with it so the first thing is going to be that here on the authorize it's not using like jwt it's not using jwt so for us to configure it to use jwt we are going to hoop over to our settings.py file which is here so anywhere in the in the file we are going to define swagger settings so swagger underscore settings so in here now this is going to be a dictionary so here we need to define the security definitions so now it's called security underscore definitions so now this is going to be a dictionary and basically now we need to specify the authentication detail so in our case it's going to be an auth token so we can write auth token and now we can even give an example so we expect it to be something like pair and then the token so we can do like jwt bearer jwt hmm. anyway so just make this one here just so they know that they should supply bearer and then jwt so then we need to define a config for this so basically what we want the type is going to be api key the type of this token is going to be api key and make sure you don't change this because it's going to yell at you so then we're going to be looking in the authorization so name is going to be authorization and then we are going to be looking for it in headers so here so you need to apply an in key and then header all right so once we have this now we can go ahead and test it out again so let me reload rerun okay come back here reload it yeah it's up it's showing and then if you click authorize you see we are supposed to apply a jwt token so let's first try to test it out and see the other things we need to, to work on so the first endpoint is register so if you look at it you can actually see that we have everything we need we have our model described so if we go to our tryout section and actually try it out so click execute you will see that it's it's now validating the password so let's add a password that is strong okay that's more <laughs> So now if we do that, you can see that we get a 201, meaning it's created. But let's test out our login. Go to the login and click try it out. You can see that, oh my god, there is no way to try it out. If you click execute, you are telling us invalid credentials, even when they didn't give us a chance to, to be able to submit our, our details. So the way we solve that is we need to set up a, a serializer basically for the login. So here in authentication, it should be here so in serializer.py we are going to set up another serializer so class i'm gonna call it login serializer so this is going to inherit from post serializers dot model serializer and then here we need to define what should be visible actually in the in the swagger ui so it's going to be the password then the username so i'm actually going to copy something here so password that so that will be able to give 
them like what we expect of the password we need it to be at least eight we need it to be max 65 then another thing is going to be the username so let's also get it up to here so let me rename this to be username and now it's going to be a chart field mm -hmm. that's right so the minimum two is okay mm -hmm. so let's define a class meta and now here we can define our model and then our fields so now now of course it's going to be username and password Right. so once we have this now we need to set it up with our view so in the views.py make sure you import it which you can here and now here we need to set up serializer classes serializer class not classes so this is going to be equal to login serializer all right so let's take a look at here this is yelling already Okay, but this looks good. So save, it's, it's going to reload, then come and reload here. And now if we go to the login, you can see that we have our description. So meaning the serializer has done its job. It has told the view what, it's, what to do. <laughs> and now here, we can basically work with, like try to log in. So if we try logging in, you can see invalid credentials. So let's try creating an account. Okay, so let's create a new user. So user two, password will be two two two. Then the username has to be unique. So execute. We get the user returned. So if we try to log in with these details, so like here. So like here. Let's keep username and password. Let's try to log in. Execute. See, we get a token. Good. So now if we go to our contacts endpoints, so let me actually collapse this. If we go to contacts and we try trying it, and then we try executing. You see that we didn't provide authentication credentials, so we can't do nothing. So now, for us to be able to do something, we need to come to the login, and then like we said, we pass bearer space, and then the token, click authorize, and this is equivalent to a to a user signing in. So now if they try execute again, you see that they get the responses. All right, good. So if we try to post to this, let me actually do that. So if we try to add to this, go to try it out. So let's not provide the contact picture because we don't have it. <laughs> so let's say if server it is false and then the country code is 330, don't know which country that is comment in the comments with your country code i will do i will comment with mine first anyway so the name is going to be test user then the phone number can be like six nine blah 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 so if you try execute you see we get a 201 good let's change it click execute get another one so now if we go back to our gate which is here and execute so you get our two great all right so now <laughs> yeah so now that we have that basically you might notice that we are not getting the id here so for us to be able to send the id because it's going to be important that we send it if you go to our, our serializer contact serializer so here you can put a comma and then add an id Okay, so if we come back and we execute, you can see we get the ID back. Good. So now if we want to view like a contact detail, we can use this ID because remember we set up the lookup field. So now we know this user has three and four at least. So now if we go to get ID, we can pass, click to try it out. We can pass like four and then click execute. And then you see we get the, the one. So if you want to update it, 
this actually can help us do everything we want to do like everything in the world including cleaning your room and of course not <laughs> anyway so you can see it's really robust it's really less set up and it's amazing in the end so so thanks guys for watching give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for new videos just like this one i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching and bye